Hello everyone, today I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, RAX43. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, you can buy me a coffee. Half of all coffees I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. So, the first step is to power on the router. Connect one end of the power adapter to a wall socket and the other end to the router. Then press the power button. Once it's on, an indicator will light up. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Now, connect a cable from your broadband provider or from your modem to a special internet port. This port is often called internet and is usually a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into a LAN port. Plug the other end into your computer or laptop's Ethernet card. Please, wait a few minutes for connection. Great, the router is now connected to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But before we begin, I will demonstrate an alternative way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Just connect the router to the power adapter and the cable from your Internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will be named as your router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password that is printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your browser and go to the URL you see on screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear Terms and Conditions and click I Agree button. And click Next. Click Next again. If your router settings don't look like mine, it means your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin passwords is used to log into your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Type new password in the first field and duplicate password in the second field. Then select two security questions and write answers for them. You need them in case you need to reset the admin password. On this page, you can change your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. The next page will display the information needed to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you are connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next. 
If the router has not been updated for a long time, the next page may automatically start the firmware update process. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. If you want it, you can do it. I'm just going to close this window, because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again, if you are logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the upper right corner, you can change the language of the router's web interface. To access the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the next page, select the internet settings. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in your internet service provider's contract. If your internet connection does not require a login, or you do not know whether it does, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Select Get Dynamically from ISP in the Internet IP Address section. In Domain Name Server section, choose Get Automatically from ISP also. If your ISP only allows internet access to a specific MAC address, you need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you're unsure about these settings, choose to use default MAC address. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, it is not necessary to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get connected after the quick setup, I'm going to show you how to clone the MAC address later in the video. Now you must reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you are logged out of it. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click Yes. After rebooting, wait a couple of minutes and try to Google something. If it's failed, then check all the cables. They must be connected correctly. Then log into the router control panel again. Go to Advanced. Setup. Internet Setup. And choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then reboot router again. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. You can buy me a coffee. I donate 50% of all coffee's purchases to animal shelters. Details can be found in the description below.